we just thank you so much for joining us on tonight. Our scripture will come from Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 15 through 19. Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 15 through 19. I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power.
Father God, we thank you for another privilege. We thank you again, Father God, for being good and being God. God, we thank you for the privilege of seeing you, Father. We ask you, Father God, to continue to open our eyes, open our hearts, bless us to see you as you are. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you are high and lifted up. There is none like you, Father. God, you are God all by yourself. God, you are the magnificent one. God, we want to acknowledge you, to see you, to be blessed by you. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, forgive us for messing up, forgive us for falling short, forgive us for missing the mark. We ask you to bless us tonight as we study your word, that your word will be clear, your word will be relevant. And Father God, that your word will be accurate. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. studying Acts chapter 11. When you studied, what did you find out? What did you find out when you studied Acts chapter 11? Since we finished 10, I knew, I just know that you studied chapter 11. What did you find out? Did you find out that chapter 11 is a repeat of chapter 10? Well, let me just tell you, chapter 11 is a repeat of chapter 10. Uh, Peter is giving account of himself. The brethren shows up from, from the Jewish a mosque or whatever they call it, the synagogue, they show up and they criticize him for hanging out with them, their Gentiles. So Peter went through the whole story of how he, he saw God, saw a great sheep. He went through the whole story and talked about how he was convinced by God that the Gentiles were also to be saved. Yes! Is that what chapter 11 talks about? Yes? I sure appreciate it. Thank you so much. So when, since you found out that Acts chapter 11 was a repeat of Acts chapter 10, then you decided, well, maybe we're not going to go there tonight. You were right. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, first six verses. Proverbs chapter 3. Some of you can recite these verses with your eyes closed without looking at the Bible. But we, we want to park here tonight and look at what God says in the book of Proverbs. We ought to always teach our children to read and study Proverbs because Proverbs stop them from climbing up fool's hill. Yes? yes? Proverbs gives us wisdom. The Bible says that wisdom is crying out in the street. In, in, in chapters 1 through 8, the Bible teaches that wisdom is running after mankind. Wisdom is crying out in the street. Do not forsake me. I'm looking to help you out. Do not bag off me. I'm waiting to bless you. And we as human beings are still running away from wisdom. And wisdom is trying to run us down. Wisdom, wisdom is that when you have knowledge, wisdom teaches you how to deal with it. Wisdom teaches you what to do with the knowledge you have. If you are educated and you don't know the Lord, you're just an educated fool. So wisdom, wisdom teaches us how to handle all this knowledge that we have, all this education we have, and it teaches us how to handle things well. That's what wisdom does. So we ought to uh, tell our children that 
that the book of Proverbs has 31 chapters. And they should be reading a chapter a day, studying a chapter a day. The young people need to have wisdom. They need some wisdom. Guess what? Seniors need wisdom. Seniors need wisdom. I'm telling you people, all of us need wisdom. And, and wisdom teaches us to not do the same old stuff over and over again, even if it's a good tradition. Wisdom tells us to make sure that we uh, do things the proper way. Yes? So uh, when we look at, look at Proverbs, we are able to gain some wisdom. It even tells us how to deal with each other, how to deal with the contrary one. Anybody know the contrary folks? Just one or two. <laughs> just just one every night and then. Just one. Anybody know anybody who, who once they get something in their mind, you, you just oh, can't man. change it. Oh, no. Can't change it. I remember doing deacon tra training here. We were training deacons and uh, we were doing training and the brother found out that that the word deacon, diacone, that word means to serve. And in the class, I said to the brothers, brothers, now, I know for many years you've been told and you've been taught and you have been shown that the word deacon means you have a position to keep the pastor in charge and to keep the pastor under control. And you are there to support the pastor. Bottom line is, if you are a deacon, you have been chosen to serve, to make a difference. When you look at Acts chapter 6, and I went through the whole thing of how deacons were chosen, and one deacon looked at me and said, you know, it's just hard to stop doing what we've been doing. <laughs> After being the four past in 12 years, you know what they've been doing. <laughs> so we have to understand that the word of God gives us wisdom. Proverbs outline. My, my point is, and I've always made these statements for a very long time, there are three ways to get wisdom. There are many ways, but three, three ways that we can get wisdom that I know of. Number one, the Bible says, if you lack wisdom, ask it of God. If you want to get wisdom, we're in Proverbs chapter three. If you want to get wisdom, you need to ask God for it. Boy, I wish I had known early on to ask God for wisdom. <laughs> that foolish stuff I did I mean that stuff I did that I didn't even know I was messing up you know it's one thing not to know you're messing up but then there's another time I should have used wisdom when I messed up and I knew I was messing up have you ever been anywhere come on talk to me tonight have you ever been anywhere you looked around and said why am I here and then you looked around and saw what they were doing you was like I don't even do what these people are doing then you look at how they act and you're like, I can't even act like they, they act. I've been, I've, been, I've been reared well. I'm all out of place. Wisdom is crying in the street. You know you don't supposed to be here. But we just keep on going like sheep to the slaughter. I mean, we just, we just follow people. Just follow people. But wisdom tells us stop doing it, don't go that way, don't act that way, don't, don't put your trust in those people. So such it is in, in Proverbs chapter 3. It says, my son, do not forget my law. Do not forget my teaching, do not forget my instructions. My son, do not forget my law. Don't forget how much time I've spent trying to tell you the right thing to do. Everybody in here had good parents, right? Everybody had good parents, right? I know, I know you did, because I can look at you and tell you had good parents. All of us had good parents, but did we act like we had good parents? No. I mean, your parents couldn't say, I know my boy wouldn't do that. Only if they knew. So he says, my son, do not forget my law. Don't forget my instructions. 
Don't forget what I've taught you. Don't forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments, my precepts, my ordinances. Make sure your heart stay on the, the, the standards that we have, that we've set up in this house, that we've set up in this church, that we've set up in this community. Because all of us have a community whether we live in one or not, right? Because your community is not the people next door. Your community are the people that you fellowship with, you spend time with. And most of the time, most of the time, when you work 12-hour shifts, you spend more time with the people mm -hmm. at work than you spend with the people at home. And so that's your community. And as you grow in this community, your community is watching you. And they are looking to see if you are keeping the commandments, you're keeping the ordinances, you're keeping the precepts that you were taught at the house. Somebody tell me what daddy used to tell me when he was trying to get this message over to me. Remember you are Davis. Remember you are Davis. <laughs> you're not a Miles, you're not a Whitlock, you're not a Carter, you're not, you sure not a Woods. Whatever you do, remember you are Davis. <laughs> What he's saying is, remember my precepts. Remember what I've taught you. Remember my word. Remember my statues. We expect our children when they go off to college to remember what we taught them at the New Beginning Church. We don't expect them to come back Jehovah's Witnesses. We don't expect them to come back Muslims. We expect them to leave here as Christians and come back as Christians. And we really expect them to act like Christ when they're out there. Yes? yes? But we might as well tell the truth. I didn't act like a Christ in there sometimes. So this, this father says, look, look, whatever you do, make sure you make sure that your heart is kept by my commandments. I didn't talk to Sister Davis about this. I never do. But her song tonight was spot on mm. to the first verse. Mm. It says, open my heart that I can see you. It's such an awesome, amazing song. Every time I, I hear it played, every time I hear it sung, it causes me to open myself up to God. Mm. And it causes me to trust God even the more. It causes me to listen to God and see what God is saying in his laws, in his precepts, in his statutes, and his ordinances. We ought to be about hearing from the Lord. The Lord is trying to tell us stuff and we just zip, rip, and running by. God is trying to speak to us. God is trying to tell us something. And we just, in this fast-paced world, I mean, it gets faster and faster every day. New stuff comes out every day. Now we got AI that says I could be standing here teaching and be on the other side of the world at the same time. This is a fast-paced world. I don't know how police officers going to police now. <laughs> oh, I saw him. I saw her doing this and that. And you never left the house. You had to count Take the camera everywhere you go to sell where you are. So it says, remember my precepts. And then check this out. Verse number two says, because you remember the precepts, because you keep the commandments, because you keep the statutes and the instructions, because you follow the law, Moses' law and man's law, because you follow this law, then you will have a length of days. For the length of days and long life and peace will add be added to you. The length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. In other words, peace, long life, the length of days will be added to you and they will be responsible for adding. It's kind of like giving. When you give, it's given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. God doesn't drop it from the sky. He says, men will give unto you. Here it says, it says, peace, they will add to you. 
long life. If you just follow the commandments, the commandments will add to you long life, the length of days, and they will add peace unto you. Where peace is welfare, safety, quietness will be added unto you. Anybody need any drama in their lives right now? You don't have to look for it. Raise your hand if you need just a little drama. Just a little drama. You know, some people like drama. One pastor used to say, bless his soul, he would say, if there's nothing going on in the church, meaning that there's no trouble in the church, and he pastors this church. He has total control. He said, if nothing is going on, nobody's falling out with anybody, I'm going to start something. Well, let me just serve you notice. You're in the right church. I want peace, tranquil. I want relaxation. I don't want to argue with anybody. I don't want anybody to argue with me. You can bet I'm not going to start anything. He said that he would intentionally get the ushers fighting against the musicians. He would intentionally get the sound crew fighting against the, against the choir members. So it's Brown, you're in the right house tonight. I want peace. I just want peace. The Bible says if you follow the instructions of the Lord, you will have peace. If you follow the ordinances and the standards of the Lord, you will have prosperity and long life. I want prosperity. I want long life. I don't want no drama. Who, who made the song? I didn't ask this with about this. Who made who created this song? Mary no more drama. I mean before I got it out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you knew. <laughs> I said, who created the song? And she's like, Mary J. <laughs> right. Oh Lord Jesus. Thank God for the educators in the room. <laughs> Somebody got to have some street sense in this church. <laughs> so she said, no more drama, right? Who did this song? Give me, give me, give me 50 feet. Give me, give me 50 feet. She's not going to answer this time, Brother Miles. Who did it? Give me 50 feet. I don't listen to the song. I don't know. Give me 50 feet. No idea. Oh, y'all trying to act holy over there. <laughs> no idea. Give me 50 feet. Give me. Was it not, you understand? I don't know. So y'all walk around and say stuff that y'all don't know? Is it a survival? Am I a survival? Who did that? I don't just Destiny Who was that? Survivor. If I'm a survivor, that's Destiny Child. Look at that. Said. Okay. Who, who did this one? Oh, God. I will never hurt you. Now, that's, that's, that's for the group right here and right here. <laughs> the man's having this. <laughs> who did this one? Burn rubber on me. Uh, that's no how players. Get out band. Yeah, man. Okay. Who is yawning for your love? Okay, that's enough. So what were you? <laughs> <laughs> Who is yawning for your love? Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> we need we need to understand. We need to understand that we have to operate in wisdom. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Davis, who did who did no more sleepers? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I knew I wasn't gonna get any answers. Who did amazing grace? <laughs> you right, I'm right with you. Love, have mercy, Jesus. Peace. We want peace, right? We want peace. When we grew up, music, even secular music, was peaceful music. Now that is true. I grew up in the era where they threw up deuces all day long. We want peace. Love, soul, peace, happiness. That was the going thing. Mm -hmm. Even when we talked about black power, we wanted peace. Yes. Who did bring the boys home? Bring them back to life. Bring them back alive. <laughs> Y'all heard of the staple singers, singers before? Yeah. Okay. What, what did Marvin Gaye say about the war? And they were talking about the war, right? But see, now if I ask young people who made, who created, who came up with the song, I don't know if I'm going to get out of here alive. 
Verse number three. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Verse number three. Proverbs three and three. Let no mercy and truth forsake you. The, the psalmist says, whatever you do, hold on to mercy and truth. Don't let it forsake you. Matter of fact, make it active in your life. Make truth something that you enjoy. Make mercy, make sure that mercy is important to you. The, 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 the writer, the wise writer talks about mercy and truth as a pair. And throughout the Bible, it, it takes mercy and truth as a pair. Mm -hmm. They walk together. Mercy and truth is a part of God's character. We have to walk with God to know mercy and truth. I'm telling you, as you walk with him, mercy will run you down. Yes. What is mercy? What is mercy? Huh? Favor? Anybody else? Yes. Mercy. 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 What is mercy? How many of us have mercy? So what is mercy? What do you have? Not getting what you deserve. Not getting what you deserve? Mm -hmm. Punishment wise. Okay, so not receiving the punishment that you deserve. I have mercy, right? Anybody in this room have mercy? What are we talking about when we say, Lord, have mercy? Lord, and many times when we say, Lord, have mercy, we talk about somebody else. <laughs> but in the secret causes of your prayer life, you ought to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Mercy. When you look at how messed up you are, <laughs> or how messed up you were, yeah. you're going to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Songwriter says, it's not, it's not my brother, it's not my sister. Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Lord, have mercy. He says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Make sure you walk hand in hand with mercy and truth. Make sure this twin combination comes with you. Make sure that, that you understand that mercy and truth is God's character. These are characteristics of God. And because they are characteristics of God, you have the ability to be God-like. Mercy and truth, they come together. They are equivalent words. It demands that we make people important to our lives. It demands that, that we are long suffering with other people. It demands that we don't cut people off because they mess us up. <laughs> it demands that we hang on in there just a little while longer. Have you ever just gotten tired of somebody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gotten to the point where I'm saying, I'm done? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'm Mississippi done, D U N done. I'm done. I quit. I'm done. Don't ask me anymore to do anything else. Don't ask me to go to another step farther. I am done. God was not done with us. Yes, <clears throat> He's long-suffering with us because he's God. And mercy and truth is all of it. It says we ought to bind it around our neck. We ought to wear it like a necklace of bracelets. We, we ought to keep it everywhere we go. Mercy and truth. We ought to walk with it. We ought, we ought to live with it every single day of our lives. We ought not make a decision without them. Realizing that God is merciful. Let me tell you, every time my eyes fly open, I know God is merciful. That's why if you ask me how am I doing, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Excellent. I'm excellent. Why am I excellent? On my most dreary day, I'm excellent because I've never found a bad day. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you, I've been in some situations that, Lord, why am I here? <laughs> but no day for me has been a bad day. On life support, that was not a bad day for me. <laughs> Nurse mistreated me as soon as I came off life support. 
It was not a bad day for me. Because if God gives me another day, I can get out of this mess. If God wakes me up one more time, I can make it. Man told me, he said, look, we're going to lay you off because you are young. And Ken just had heart surgery and he's in his 50s and he got a lot of bills to pay. We understand you got more seniority, but he just returned back to work. He got a lot of medical bills, and we laying you off because you are 23 years old. Mm -hmm. He's 50 something mm -hmm. with a family. Mm -hmm. He just got here three months ago, but we're going to lay you off. Mm -hmm. My reply is as long as I have a strong back and able hands, I can make. As long as I'm healthy, I can make it. I thank God for another day. I, I look back at my writing. I used to write my prayers out to God. I, I would write it. And I still got that little gray book with white fish on it. And I, I look at that book every now and then, and it reminds me of how far God has brought me. The year was 1986. I'm writing my prayers out. And I'm praying like this. Lord, Bless me to make $20,000 a year. <laughs> I'm making sixteen. Lord, if you can, if you would. Lord, just allow me to make $20,000 a year. That was my prayer, brother. I mean, I was serious, too. Man. Lord, bless me to make $20,000. And then my next prayer was, Lord, bless me to work for a Christian supervisor. Mm. One who would understand that I could, I got to be in church on Sunday. Mm. That was my prayer. Mm. Yeah. Lord, bless me. I want to go to your house and give you glory. Mm. That was my prayer. At 23 years old, Lord, bless me to be able to make it on $20,000 a year. Mm. But when you, when you have a narrow scope, when you haven't seen God in a mighty way yet, then your prayer life is limited to $20,000. And guess what? There are some people in the 21st century, in the year 2023, asking God to bless them to make $20,000. And everybody in this room just look at that. And say, I don't know when I made $20,000, but I was serious about it. I was asking God to bless me to make $20,000. God, don't let me go without mercy. Lord, keep giving me your truth. And Lord, I realize I need to bind it around my neck. And you look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, the Bible says we ought to teach our children. Put the word in them. Write it on the doorpost. Put it around their neck. Teach it to them when they're going out the door. Teach it to them when they're coming back in the house. Have you noticed something about this church? Mm. When it comes to the word, it's on every door, mm -hmm. every doorpost. Mm -hmm. Now, if everybody has looked it up or not, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. yep. But it's not just there for pretty blue and white writing. It's there so we can, we can know as we go in and out, the Lord is with us. And we're asking him to be with us. It's God's word. And then every word, every scripture dictates what goes on behind the door. You know what I mean? So God, God, we asking you to bless us. You ought to try it sometime. God, I'm asking you to bless me. Bless me to obey your precept. Bless me to have long life. And Lord, if I'm going to have long life, bless me to be healthy. Give me mercy. In other words, Lord, I know I don't deserve it, but I know you are a kind God. Mm -hmm, Give it to me. Mm -hmm. Bless me with it. Mm -hmm. I know you are a kind God. It says, bind it around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Open my heart, Lord, so I can see you. Write, write these precepts on your heart. Make sure that you have these commandments of God as a part of your life. Your very, very, very being. You want your being to be controlled 
by the precepts of God. And when you're controlled by the precepts of God, let me tell you, some of the things we do, we wouldn't do. Some of the attractive things we would, we would do. I went by the store the other day. And I walked in, and I walked right down the center aisle. See, when you walk in the door, there's a center aisle. And right there, there are some moon pies like we used to eat. <laughs> there are coconut moon pies. There are vanilla moon pies. And there are chocolate moon pies. The only difference in those moon pies and the ones we used to eat, the ones we used to eat was this big. The ones they sell now are this big. And so they, they tell you that you ought, to, you ought to eat small quantities in order to be healthy. I guess I don't get it. Because if they're not this big and they're that big, I got to make up for the size, right? So I eat three of them. Well, I know I'm going to eat one. But God has a way of blessing us, and he wants to be a part of our hearts, our innermost being. We need to write his preaching on our hearts, his precepts, his laws. We got to write it on our hearts. Carry it everywhere we go. It has to make up who we are. The word of God has to make up who we are. We ought to have precepts that follow the word of God. Verse number four. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and men. Men give us favor when we walk with the Lord. God gives us favor when we walk with the Lord. And people esteem us really high when we walk with the Lord. They may not ever tell you. They may not ever act like it. But at the end of the day, they esteem you. They actually look up to you because you're walking with the Lord. Anybody notice that? About your family, your friends. That If you want to know what people really think about you, let them get in trouble. So the reason when they get in trouble, the ones who have criticized you showing up at the church, the ones who have criticized you serving at the church, the ones who have criticized you always at the church are always praying, are always obeying God. Those are the ones that will find you when you get in trouble, when they get in trouble. Right? They're going to look for you. Matter of fact, they've been waiting on, where you been all day? I've been trying to call you all day. Mm -hmm. If they're not calling you for you to give them something, mm -hmm. they're calling you so you can talk to God for them. Mm -hmm. The Bible says when you walk in the precepts of God, when you walk in the standards of God, people will highly esteem you and people will give you favor. And they will not all the time know why they're doing it. They won't even know all the time why they're doing it. They can't explain why they're doing it. When the guy from, from Concord came here and, and just dropped our, our mortgage from a million five hundred to, to six hundred and three thousand dollars, he stood right here in the podium and he said, my, my partners and I still don't know why we're doing it. I didn't even shout it out. I didn't say anything until the, the, the paper was signed. And after the paper was signed, I said to him, the Lord did it. Didn't want him to change his mind. See, it was wisdom. You got to know when to shout. You got to know when to celebrate. He still just said, we decided to do it. And I, we went all week waiting on him to show up. And when he finally showed up, he said, we don't know why we did it. I didn't say mumbling word. I'm still sitting there looking at him. And then when he signed the paper and it was a done deal, I said, God did it. God gives you favor. I mean, just not $350,000 down, just disappeared. 
Some people say that's not good for you to do a bank like that. Mm -hmm. One thing that, that you're going to say when uh, my arms are folded in service for the last time, there's just some things I don't care about. <laughs> and forbearance is not something I, I really care about. I'm willing to go down in history and say that we were in forbearance and they, they gave it to us. Because Jesus, before he came, we were in forbearance. We were in foreclosure. But Jesus paid the cost. Just for us. Verse 4 says that we were found favor and high esteem in the sight of God and in the sight of man. Let me tell you, it is just as good to have favor in the sight of man as it is in the sight of God. Because God uses man to bless us. And when God uses man to bless us, then we need to understand that it's God that did it. You can't even walk around making everybody you deal with in business mad. <laughs> you can't fight everything that comes up. You got to get along with somebody. Yeah. And God gives you favor. That's right. God blesses you. God makes a way out of the way. Are there any witnesses in the house? Yeah. When life has given us a bad deal, God makes it a good deal. Amen. When life gives us bad stuff, God makes it a good thing. You remember when they got to a place called Mara? Moses leading the people out of Egypt. They get in the wilderness. They get to this water, and the water is bitter. Guess what the people did? They complained. God made bitter water sweet yes. like never before. They drank water that they didn't have in Egypt. You remember in Luke chapter, chapter 2 where Jesus at this wedding in Canaan of Galilee and when they got to the reception they ran out of wine. Uh -huh. Now some people use that just to get drunk. <laughs> Jesus made wine so he didn't have a problem with it. The Bible says they ran out of wine, and the wine represents joy. So at a wedding, you want to have joy. They ran out of wine, and Jesus told them to go fill up the water pot, and between the filling and the drinking, the water, as someone said, blushed. Yeah. <laughs> and water became wine. That's right. The guys that were drinking said, look, man, you have done the reverse of what normal Hosts always do. What they do is they, they, they get you drunk on the good stuff, and by the time you get drunk, they bring in the bad wine, and because you're drunk, you just don't know what you're drinking. You know? They said, but you are a great host. You have saved the best for last. Jesus will save the best for last. I'm telling you, he is such an awesome God. He saved the best for that. So God gives us favor. God gives us self-esteem. He gives other people esteem to highly esteem us in the sight of God and man. And this is the, these are the two verses you've been waiting on all night. Verses five and six. In all your ways, acknowledge who? Him. Acknowledge God. In all your ways, acknowledge God. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. In every last one of your ways, acknowledge him. You ought to be looking for ways to acknowledge God. When people talk about, oh, you're so smart, you need to tell them it's God. It's God. Oh, you're so skilled, it's only God. Give the credit to God because God will reverse the thing and give credit to you. Yes, sir. I skipped five. Hmm? First five. I skipped five. Oh, what I do? I got pretty excited. Thank you, sir. When we look at five, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Thank you, sir. The rest of them just let me run on. They're ready to go home. 
They're just ready to go home. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts. Trust him. I was looking, I was looking, I was sitting there, they're supposed to be here. <laughs> and nobody said anything. They said, you the one talking about trusting God. Trust him enough to find out where you are. <laughs> you said you trusted him? Yeah. We gonna sit here and see if you trust him. I said five and six. And so the little one said, I tell him about it, that's it over. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I knew that didn't flow right. <laughs> this word trust means to lean on me. If I lean on this mic stand, it won't hold me up. But if I lean on this lectern, it'll hold me up. And when you lean on God, you trust in the fact that God will hold you up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. When you lean on God, God can bless it. But you got to trust him. The word trust means to rely on him. The word trust means that you got to rely on nobody else but him. Anybody relying on him today? Anybody, if you rely on your degree, you won't get a job. All right. All right. If you rely on your education, they pass over you. If you rely to get the next promotion, you need to understand that promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. Promotion comes from God in heaven. It says, trust in the Lord. Lean on him. And when you trust in him, you have a conscious dependency on yes. him. Mm -hmm. You're conscious of it. You can't trust in the Lord and it sneaks up on you. Mm -hmm. You got to be conscious. You got to make a conscious decision to trust God. You have to make a conscious decision to say, God, I am going to trust you regardless what comes. Yes. Become high water or low water, I'm going to trust you. If I get it right or not, I'm going to trust you. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me tell you how what this word trust means. It means I'm standing here talking about trusting God. And they turn off my lights. Mm -hmm. But I'm still able to teach it. Mm -hmm. And tell you to trust him because he is light in darkness. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, when you trust God and you, and you tell people to trust him, you telling him that telling people that he's bread in a starving land and you don't have food to eat. See, when you trust him, it doesn't mean you got it all together. It just simply means that you trust God to the point that even though I don't have it together, I know God is right outside of the door. Matter of fact, I know God is in the house and he's watching over me. When you trust God, you're going to trust God to be with you regardless of how you feel. The trust is not in a feeling. It's kind of like salvation. You don't feel saved. You have to be saved. If you trust in God, you just got to trust him. And if it's already there, you have nothing to trust him for. What that's tell me. You have nothing for which to trust him. If you already see it. If you're already walking in, I am trusting that God is going to bless me beyond measure. Now, the time from the, the moment I pray to the time he delivers, and we have to have faith. Amen. That's right. You got to walk in faith. And guess what? We can't even tell God how to do it. And we can't tell God when to do it. And when God does it, he does it many times when we least expect it. But we got to trust him. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. Trust in God. When you trust him, he is able to do things that you would not expect him to do because you've gone on off doing something else. You've forgotten what you prayed and God just shows up. Have you ever gotten a call from a job application you filled out months ago? And they never return your call. They never address your application. But you know you prayed and you trusted God while you were praying. And all of a sudden, 
They call you and they say, well, we want you to come in for your second interview. And you haven't had the first one yet? You don't tell them I ain't had the first one. You just go in and act like it's the second one. If when you have wisdom, you don't walk in and talk about what you don't have. You walk in and tell people what you're going to get. That's right. That's why I tell our young people, dress up. Brush your teeth. Comb your nappy head. You know, the thing these days is to walk and get your head as nappy as you can find. It. Yeah. And if it's not nappy enough, you take this little comb and, and mess it up some more. Mm. Brother Lyle, you don't do that, do you? <laughs> we, we, were riding, we were riding on the trail. We were riding on the trail. And, and we left the trail and rode into Third Ward. All the way from Missouri City to Third Ward. And then three days later, the guy said, hey, man. Let's ride down this street. I think I dropped, dropped my breast. <laughs> Three days later? Yeah. And he rode down the street. We rode down the street on the bike. And, and the man, he stopped the man in the car. Mm. Said, man, I dropped my breast. He said, I saw one down, down the street around the corner right there. And right where he dropped it, that breast was laying there. Mm. I said, man, you put that breast in your head, all kind of termites could come out. Mm. Throw that breast away. He says, he said, no, but I hate to lose anything. He took it to his office and put it in, in, the, in, the, in the sink and washed it out with dishwasher mm. liquid. Mm -hmm. I said, man, you don't mess around and get the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> and guess what kind of breast it was? It was one of those little phones with holes in it. <laughs> and he just couldn't do without it. He can with his I said, brother, you can get them for two 75. We rode 13, 14, 20 miles over here. We got to ride 20 miles back because you want to get a breast. I thought we were just riding. What you have to understand is that as you trust God and lean not to your own understanding, you don't do crazy stuff like that. Amen. I mean, we ride now 288. Cars just whistling by us. Woo, woo. That was not wise. That was ignorance. I thought we were just riding. He go, no, let's turn right here. We get in third one. He's looking for a brush. Mm. We we risk our lives for a brush. And it wasn't even a decent breast, brother. But like it was a a, a, a phone. A phone. Mm -hmm. Unwise. Trust in the Lord. And if you had told me, I would have given him 275. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Because we lean to our own understanding, then God can bless us in wisdom. When we walk in wisdom, when we lean not to our own understanding, and we lean on the Lord, then God can bless us. And there's verse number six. Right after verse number five. It didn't even move. Mm. <laughs> didn't move. In all your ways, acknowledge him. This word means to observe him, to get to know him in a very intimate way, a very real way, to get to know him in the process of living. When you acknowledge him, you want to get to know him. You want to observe him. You ought to observe God's ways. How does God act in these situations? Remember now, I'm praying and I'm asking God. And the time that I pray to the time that God delivers is where our faith abides. And as we pray and we ask God to let us know when it's going to happen, he may and may not. Mm. But one thing we have to constantly do is acknowledge him in all our ways. Yes. Again, the word acknowledge means to get to know him. In your living, get to know him. Be more concerned about getting to know God than you are about getting God's stuff. Mm -hmm. Am I saying anything to anybody? Mm -hmm. If you focus on getting to know God, 
If you focus on getting to recognize God, if you focus on to recognizing God and appreciating him in the midst of your living, then you won't focus on your living. You'll focus on God. And that's when God blesses. And he shall. And he will direct your path. This verse doesn't say he's going to give you what you want. But it says through wisdom, through laws, through precepts, he will direct your path. It's more important to us to be directed by God than receive what we ask God for. The reason being is because God is all-knowing. He can see further down the road than any of us. And because he can see further down the road than any of us, he knows what we can handle, and he knows where we are, and he knows where we need to be going. He's God. And because he's God, we ought to focus on acknowledging him, getting to know him, and being intimately involved with him. As we intimately involved with God, we sometimes can understand what God is doing. Sometimes you hear me say, I see you, preacher. I see where he's headed. Pastor Wilson was preaching. He gave an analogy, and then he moved from the analogy to the Bible. I see you, preacher. And I knew he was headed to Calvary when he brought it up. We need to get so intimately involved with God until we see him, we acknowledge him, we thank him for where we are in life. Just thank him. Because you know what? It could be worse than what it is. You're right. All you got to do, you don't have to leave your community, you don't have to leave your apartment, you don't have to leave, some of us don't have to leave our house. All we have to do is look around and we see folk 10, 20, 15 times worse than we are. That's right. And it, all it takes is one little tittle mm -hmm. of tragedy. That's all. And that which we were praying for God about yeah. doesn't really matter anymore. Right. When I was on life support, you know, it, 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 it didn't matter if Sister Davis put too much gas in the car, not enough. <laughs> I knew she wasn't going to put it in there anyway. <laughs> She gonna wait till I wake up, <laughs> Sister Brown. She gonna wait till I wake up, Sister Brown. I can hear her praying right now, Sister Woods. Lord bless him to wake up so he can put gas in my car. I know that right now. <laughs> so he can open my door. <laughs> bless him to get up now. <laughs> but in the midst of tragedy, other stuff really doesn't matter. That's why we have to get to know God. Acknowledge Him. Get to know Him in an intimate way. When you focus on God, then God delivers what we need and what we want. God is able to give us a bonus if we just get to know Him. There's a book that I'm reading, and it's called Soul Care. One of my professors at one of the conferences wrote the book called Soul Care, Dr. Timothy Jones. And when he talks about soul care, he talks about how the soul has to constantly be in contact with God. The soul, when you're saved, your soul knows God's voice. Your soul is in tune with God. Sometimes you don't even have to ask God for what you want. God is already there and you are already in touch and in tune with him. Don't miss God. Mm. Dr. Timothy Jones said, you have to walk with him and walk closely beside him and learn of him. Be intimately involved with God. And when you're intimately involved with God, God is able to bless you, and you know the story, real good a heap in a penny. God is able to do it. And then what happens is, when we are so intimately involved with God, Stuff that we were praying for really doesn't matter to the point that God is in your hand. God, you do. God promised to fight our battles. God, you fight this battle. No, that's right. Stop fighting the battle and just tell God. 
Now, God, this is what you said in your word. Mm -hmm. I'm trusting your word. Mm -hmm. And you, I see in your word, God, that you did it for other folk. Mm -hmm. I believe that I'm your child. Mm -hmm. And I believe you're doing it for me. But in the meantime, God, I'm going to focus on my life with you. I'm going to focus on getting myself aligned with you. And whatever you do, God, is all right with me. That's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. He died a sacrificial death. He gave his life, a voluntary, a, a life that he gave, a suffering servant gave for you and me. Mm -hmm. On Calvary. Mm -hmm. Died for us. And knew he had to go die. Only three, 33 years old. Some of us in this room is twice that age. And we worried about stuff and Jesus didn't worry about it. Gave his life for a world. Not just five billion people. For a whole world. Everywhere. Every race, creed, and color. And we worried about a house, a car. We worried about stuff. And Jesus gave his whole life. And that's why we want to be thankful. As we come up to this Thanksgiving period, and I do my series on Thanksgiving starting next week, we got to be, every time you think, you ought to thank. Yes. Every time you T-H-I-N-K, you ought to T-H-A-N-K. You ought to thank him every time you think of him. Because we serve all the time. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Come on to Jesus. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment to get it right with God. Just believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a barred tomb. He rose from the dead. He rose just to you. He died just to you. He was buried just to you. He gave his life for you. If you can believe this story today, and I know you can, you can trust him to save you and make a difference in your life. Just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. He will save you and he will qualify you for heaven. He will make a difference in your life on planet Earth. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe if you pray this prayer, honestly believing that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead, we believe that you're now saved. I say to you, please get involved in a good Bible teaching church. I recommend the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas. If you receive Christ today, inbox us and let us know that we want to rejoice with you. And we want to make sure that your soul is saved. Thank you for joining. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is offering, offering time. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesusandyahoo.com. Lifting.jesusandyahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gifts, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77. Four five nine. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. 
Let me take this time to thank all of our members for the hospitality you gave uh, those who visited with us, some from 600 miles away. Thank you so much for your kindness, your service to those who visited with us on Family and Friends Day. Thank you so much. I want to thank those who, who drove in, rode in, who came in to visit with us, our visitors from Mississippi. I want to thank Pastor Clifford Wilson, his wife, Sister Kathy Wilson, and all those who journeyed with him. They met them, they made a, a safe trip back home. And we want to thank God for that. Amen. I failed to do this on Sunday, so let me do it publicly now. I want to thank Brother Miles. Brother Euro Miles for making the trip down to the funeral service of, of Brother Carter's brother. Thank you, Brother Miles. I had a, and thank you, Sister Brown, for for making that trip down to, well, he saved his day. Thank you so, so much. I'm only at the new beginning church. Thank you, Sister Brown, Brother Miles, for, for coming that funeral as I had a funeral here in, in Houston. So, um, I just couldn't be two places at the same time, and I figured Brother Carter would kind of understand that I'm not working through AI right now. So, so thank you, Brother Carter, for being understanding, and thank you, Brother Miles and Sister Brown, for making that trip. Did anybody else make that trip that I have not mentioned other than that family? Anybody else? Thank you so much. I failed to mention that on Sunday. I, I intended to, but I'm 60 plus now. I'm 60 plus now. Some things, if I don't write it down, it just escapes me. Uh, the Or Davis uh, piano recital is this Saturday at 9 a.m. The Or Davis piano recital, we, we need uh, members to come and, and support, and we need men here from the start to the to the finish. If we can get here at 8.30, that would be good. This um, Saturday morning at 8.30, and then we have to rearrange everything, put everything back in place for the Church of God to worship here as they do every Saturday. Amen? So men, please come. Invite other men to come and be a part. And we look forward to the fellowship and to watch young people do creative things through instruments. Amen? Amen. Are there any other comments or prayer requests or are there any praise reports? All right, let us stand. Father God, we thank you now, Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, that we can look to you. We know that as we make decisions, you are the ultimate decision. Lord, we ask you to bless us, Father God, to make good, godly decisions. Bless us with wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Bless us with favor. Bless us with high self-esteem and high esteem from God and man. Lord, bless us tonight, Father God, as we leave this place, that we will stay in your word, that your word will be real to us, that your word will lead, guide, and direct us, that your word will protect us. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and we ask it all. Amen. Thank God. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. You are dismissed.